What's up, Wall fans, Facebook friends? Welcome to the episode 25 live feed for Go Tell It to the Wall podcast. Uh, I am Sean O'Rourke. If you're not already aware, which you should be because you found this video somehow, uh, and I am the host of Go Tell It to the Wall. So I'm going to get right into it. We'll do a little bit of interaction on this side as well. Uh, so feel free to to ask questions, chime in, whatever it might be. Uh, but we will be recording the entirety of episode 25 for Go Tell It to the Wall podcast. All right, Wall fans, welcome to, as always, another exciting edition of Go Tell to the Wall podcast. I am your host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and this is episode 25. 25, that's right, it's a banner episode for Go Tell to the Wall, nice round number 25. Uh, of course, we're not stopping anytime soon, um, and technically this is the 26th episode since we had an episode zero. Yeah, I like to confuse people, so that's kind of how we did it. Um, and of course, we are live on Facebook for the entirety of this episode. Uh, so if you're listening to this through the podcast, you've already missed the live stream. But if you're listening and kind of wondering what's happening and where I'm getting these comments from, a lot of it could be from the live stream as well. And of course, check us out on YouTube, uh, Facebook, all the different places where you can find those videos as well. Uh, so we're going to kick things off. Uh, as if, if you're an avid listener of Go Tell to the Wall, you may notice that we were off for a couple weeks. Uh, now, I took a week off simply for family stuff uh, because I wanted to spend some time with my wife and daughter, nothing nothing about it. Uh, and then the following week, things kind of just went crazy. Um, unfortunately, my, my, my grandmother in Chicago, uh, she, she took a turn. Um, she had a couple bouts with cancer and got cancer again, very fast moving. Um, and so everyone kind of went into go mode um, and unfortunately, about a week after we found that out, week and a half, uh, she did pass away. Um, so that would be why I've missed a few episodes. I was actually in Chicago uh, last week. I got back last Thursday, uh, and then the week before that was literally the, the night that I spoke to my grandmother for the very last time. Um, so obviously was not able to do any kind of a decent episode at that time. Um, I am, it's going it, to, I'm going to tell you right now, I want to get into some Stuff. I want to tell some stories and pay tribute to my grandmother, so just bear with me. Uh, these are all going to be good stories, but I'm going to try my best to keep things together as we're doing this over the course of the, the entire podcast episode, the entire live stream, and everything else. But fear not, we are going to have lots of other stuff, lots of common sense, lots of social media stuff, um, and of course there is some, uh, some mental health stuff that I do want to talk about because there's some good stuff and some bad stuff that's come out recently uh, and it just needs to be talked about because that's what we do. Uh, one of the main themes at Go Tell to the Wall, outside of common sense and have passion, is, is fighting for mental health awareness uh, and, and really just knowledge of mental health. So we're going to talk a little bit about that this episode. Uh, of course, the social plugs for Go Tell to the Wall. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. Uh, of course, we are on Twitter, at TellTheWallPod. You can also follow my personal Twitter, which honestly sees a little more action, uh, and that would be at Magic Muppet, or of course, you can just search Sean Works, search Go Tell It to the Wall, all over the place. Um, and of course, if you're listening to this, you found it somehow, but if you need other places to get podcasts or whatever it might be, we are on Google Play Music, on iTunes. Uh, it is hosted on Podomatic, and it's really on any one of your favorite uh, podcast apps. That being said... Uh, we kind of outgrew our britches a little bit. I mentioned that on a live video, I think, a couple weeks ago. So there's some new stuff coming down the pipes because with Podomatic, the, the site that I use to host the podcast, uh, I've, I've, we've had to increase storage space and bandwidth and everything else. And with that comes a fancy new website on Podomatic for Go Tell to the Wall. So that's going to be dropping soon, uh, basically as soon as I get them to, to fully set it up and everything else. Um, so, so keep an eye out for that, as well as... Finally, finally, the website I've been talking about for months, we are, I am setting up a website uh, with all of my personal branding, so you will find podcast stuff on there, you will find live hosting stuff on there, all kinds of great stuff, uh, so keep an eye out for that. It's coming down in the next couple weeks as well. I'm, I'm literally working on it, um, not as we speak, because I'm speaking to all of you and I'm on a live stream, so clearly if I was doing that, I mean, that I would be very multi-talented and I just, I, I only got two arms. I'm not quite that talented uh, to be able to do all those things. And oddly enough, 
Facebook is giving me some weird invite thing uh, where it's telling me I can invite people that are actually already on the pod, on the live stream. I don't really fully understand what's going on there, um, but if, if you're only listening to this, you can check out uh, uh, you can check out Facebook as well. Check out the live streams. We're usually live every Thursday is is when I record. Uh, usually live around seven seven thirty p.m. Pacific time. That is all dependent on the real boss of the podcast and of the household, and that would be uh, that would be my daughter Zofia. <laughs> so if she says that we can do things on time, uh, then we will. But if not, then sometimes it might be a little later. Today I was supposed to start at 7 p.m. Got a little backed up. Had to get the uh, the studio going, everything else. Um, so we went live about 7:30. I'll be honest; these things happen. It you know it's it's showbiz, I guess, for lack of a better word, and it happens. Um, so, all that being said, I want to talk a little bit, a uh, little bit about. Um, let's see, and now the feed's not even working. What's going on here? Okay, so I hope everyone's seeing this on the feed. If anyone on the feed can see things, uh, I don't know what this invite does. Um, we're gonna try that out. Apologies if you're only listening to this. Uh, trying to get people on here. So if you're if you're on the uh, if you're on the live feed, hit me up. Let me know, make sure you're actually seeing this. Something went wrong, having trouble playing the video. Yeah, whatever's going on here. So we might be having some trouble with the live feed. If anyone's out there on the live feed, let me know. Um, Cause I, cause I wanna know kind of what's happening here. Uh, it seems to not be working. No, maybe it's working now. No, I don't know what's happening. Um, anyway, we are on the live feed, but I do wanna talk a little bit about um, about my grandmother, uh, the incredible Carrie Ultoski, Teresa Ultoski, um, who, was mother of five children, grandmother of, of uh, oh, perfect. Thank you, Bree. I, I'm, for some reason, it's not pulling up on, on my computer, but as long as you guys are seeing it, then I'm good to go. I, it's, pro- it's probably a user error. Um, so thank you, Bree, for that. Uh, but again, I do want to talk about Teresa Wiltowski, mother of five children, grandmother to 13 grandchildren, uh, and great-grandmother so far to seven great-grandchildren. Probably going to be a few more on the way at some point, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> So she, numbers could be increasing uh, even after um, she passed away. Uh, I, now, I know everyone's grandmother is important to them and, and everything else. Um, and this isn't trying to say, this isn't a battle of my grandmother's better than yours. Um, but I do want to talk about her and how she was always my biggest fan. Um, my grandmother was very stern, very, very straightforward. You, you never had to worry about her talking about you behind your back because she just said it to your face. That's what she did. Uh, but she was also very loving and very love, very caring and very supportive. So as much as she would have liked to see all of, all of her grandchildren be like doctors and lawyers and this kind of stuff, they, they just didn't. You know, I went to film school. Um, I'm sure she would have loved to see me become a doctor, you know, along those lines. And she, and she probably said it a few times. In fact, I know she did. Uh, so it, it, it's happened. Um, but even when we weren't doing those things that she would have preferred us to do that would have maybe brought us more success, she was ever so supportive in the things that we did choose to do. And, and this started at a very young age. When I was in high school, I was a high school athlete. I ran track, cross country, played basketball, played roller hockey. Um, I played football for a minute until I got hit and, and realized <laughs> this is not for me. Clearly got a concussion. and We'll probably talk about that over the next couple of weeks because a lot of stuff's happening with football and the NFL and concussions. Um, but she always supported. Uh, and so when I was a high school athlete, she would always call me and she would say, what do you need? What kind of gear do you need? Do you need new shoes? Do you need new bags? And every every season, whatever it might be, she she got me something, you know. Um, and and the thing to remember here is my family didn't have a ton of money growing up. Uh, now my mother and father did the best they could. I actually did get some of the better sports equipment, some of the better running shoes, some of the better track spikes, some of the better basketball shoes because my parents would spend the little bit of money we had on those things. Uh, but then my grandmother would swoop in and and there'd be those other things, you know whether it was a new bag to go to my track meets, whether it was new warm-ups, whatever it might have been, uh, she, she was always there to support financially and, and, and continuing that support uh, just emotionally and, and always off asking how things were going. That continued into adulthood for me. Uh, I was a triathlete when I spent time at Radio, at Radio Disney and with the Walt Disney Company, uh, r- running triathlons with the Disney Tri Team. And she would always call every year when I was setting up. And keep in mind that, for the, the, the Malibu Triathlon, which was the big banner race that I did every year, we'd raise money for children's hospitals. So you could donate money directly to children's hospitals. You'd call me and say, uh, what can I do to help? And I'd always say, 
I mean, you can, you can donate to Children's Hospital, you know, help out the kids. And she's like, no, I, I will donate to the kids, but what do you need? This happened every year uh, for a good three, four years as I was doing triathlon. She would call, what do you need? What can I buy you? So she bought me my first pair of racing sunglasses when I first started doing triathlon. She bought me a new wetsuit uh, a few years ago when I, when I was on like my second or third year of, of doing triathlons and, and pulled out my wetsuit and it was ripped. She bought me a new wetsuit. That's what she did. Um, and she did all these things. And then even beyond that, uh, when I first graduated film school, and this is the one that sticks with me the most, and this is why this entire episode and, and really my entire podcast um, career, for lack of a better word, I'm doing some finger quotes there for the Facebook Live feed, uh, it, it really is dedicated to her. And I will tell you, when I first got out of film school, um, I wanted to do, I wanted to get into radio. I, I always loved film, but I wasn't into the hustle of it. And I've always enjoyed hosting things. Um, and, and I found I had a natural talent for hosting things and for talking to people and being behind a microphone, not acting, not acting. I, I learned my first year of film school that I couldn't act because people would ask me to act in their stuff knowing uh, that I had a background in public speaking. Uh, I was actually a mobile DJ at that time. That's when I was with the mobile DJ company out of Fullerton. And they'd always ask me um, and then realize I couldn't act. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I had a passion uh, for radio, for hosting, for being in front of people, for really just BSing with all of you. Uh, and I did this junky little radio show where I actually I had to pay for studio time, uh, and they would they would put it on the air. This is before like podcasting was big, before like real social media and all this stuff. You couldn't do jump on a live feed on Facebook. You couldn't just upload a podcast and and have people listen to it. You had to pay for studio time. So I was doing a little radio show, half hour radio show that would air at like between five and six in the morning, different times every week. Weekly radio show, half an hour, uh, and it would air on a janky radio station here in Los Angeles called KCLA. Um, and this is, as much as there wasn't social media and everything else, uh, there was internet. So we did have, uh, I see Bree is responding to the mobile DJ company uh, out of, she also had that similar experiences with them. Uh, but this janky little radio station um, out of Los Angeles called KCLA also had a website where you could stream live. You had to live stream. You couldn't go back and, and listen. You could stream live my radio show. My grandmother, of all those radio shows that I did, it's probably, you know, 30 to 50 of them as I was coming up in the world before I even started really working full-time with Disney. I was working part-time uh, for Radio Disney, just doing events. Um, and, and my grandmother, it would be on like Saturdays and Sundays. She would get up now, granted, she was in Chicago, so she, you know, she wasn't quite up at five in the morning, which I think she was anyway, because she was just always that early person. Uh, never missed a show. Like 30 to 50 of these shows, never, ever, ever missed one of my radio shows. Uh, and that's the type of person my grandmother was. That's who she was always supportive, um, and, and just no matter what we did, no matter what we did, she was always supportive. Uh, now, when my radio shows weren't that great, she would be honest, that, that one wasn't so great, Sean, uh, but she was listening, and she was ever so supportive when really I couldn't get anyone else to listen. Nobody wanted to listen to my radio show. My grandmother, two time zones away, you know, however, 2,000 miles away in Chicago, was listening to, the, was listening to all of them, all of them, all of them. And that's why really this entire episode and really most of any kind of career I have when it comes to me talking behind a microphone like this uh, is dedicated to my grandmother, uh, to Teresa Oltowski. In fact, my daughter's middle name is, is, comes from my grandmother. Uh, her patron saint was St. Therese, uh, who is known as the little flower or the little rose. She's known for roses, and therefore uh, my daughter, Zofia's middle name is Rose, named uh, for my grandmother. Um, and just always knowing that she'll be a significant part of uh, my life. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about her as we get further into the episode. I can't do too much at once, simply because I know I'm going to get too emotional. Um, I just am. I'm going to save some of that for toward the end. Um, so let's get into some social media stuff here. This one, this one, it's just out of hand. And I think I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but we had another instance uh, where, unfortunately, a... a a kid, I, I want to say 14, I'm pulling it up with the exact age, uh, a 14-year-old kid in India committed suicide by jumping off the roof of a seven-story building. Uh, and they have found evidence that this is linked to the Blue Whale Challenge. Now, most of you out there have probably heard about this. If you haven't, it's been in the news quite a bit. Uh, it, is, it is an online challenge. Really, they've looked into it. They don't know. They haven't been able to trace back kind of where it started or anything. But it's this online challenge where um, 
where kid, uh, kids send in a picture and say, I want this challenge. And then it's a series of, I want to say 30, somewhere around 30, 30 or 50, don't quote me on that, 30 to 50 challenges where they do things. And some of them might be, uh, might be cutting themselves, might be standing on the edge of a very, very tall building, um, all kinds of different challenges that lead up to like this 30th or 50th challenge where the end of it is committing suicide. This is a real thing that is happening in the world, not just in our country, in the world uh, that is going on right now. And you've all heard me talk about this many times on the podcast. I talked about Chester Bennington a couple weeks ago, who unfortunately committed suicide um, the day before my grandmother passed away. I was, it's just, it's one of these ridiculous things where everything's coming down at once. Uh, and, and suicide's not a game. It's not a joke. It's final. That's it. And the crazy thing about this blue whale challenge is to win the game, you commit suicide. That's what's crazy about this. It's a suicide game. And kids are participating. And the reason this is, that I bring this up and the reason this is important is I always say, talk to those around you. You know, chances are you know someone that, has, that suffers from some kind of mental illness. Some kind of mental illness. You probably have them around you. Now, I'm not saying go up to all of your friends and say, what, what's going on with you? What's happening with you right now? And everything else. You know? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying be aware. Be aware of what's going on around you. Because the thing is, most of those kids that have committed suicide, really, most people that have committed suicide, you can't save everyone. But some people just need someone to talk to. They need to talk through. You know, the suicide hotlines and everything else, that's fantastic. But chances are someone with mental illness, they're, they're just, they're, they need a friend. They need someone that they know personally to talk to. Talk to. I know, right, Jen? This is a ridiculous challenge. It, I, I just, I don't, I don't understand it. Um, love you too, my, my mother's on the live stream. Um, I don't understand it. And the thing is, these people just need someone to talk to most likely. Now, again, you can't save everyone. You just can't. Mental illness is a hell of a thing. It really is. It's a scourge. It's something many people have to deal with. Um, but it just comes down to talking to each other and lifting each other up. Lift each other up. Instead of being insulting, lift each other up. Instead of throwing around terms like, oh, OCD. I, I'm OCD because I'm, I'm very, very clean. I'm very neat and clean. No. No. Be conscious of those things. Be conscious of those things. In fact, I'm going to give you an example of, of what it really is like to be OCD or OED. But we're going to get into that in the common sense section. Uh, so if you have kids out there, be very well aware of this blue whale challenge. Uh, and really, if you're, especially if you're younger and you have friends and someone starts talking about this, talk to them. You know, just be aware. That's what it is. Because there's chances that a lot of people just need someone to talk to. I've suffered from mental illness my, my entire life really debilita uh, from a debilitating standpoint in my 20s is when it all became clear what was going on. Um, and, and sometimes I just need someone to talk to. But the thing is, I don't reach out. Now, I've never been suicidal. I, I can honestly tell you that. But there have been times where I just need someone to talk to and I didn't reach out. I didn't. So just be aware of those around you, wall fans. Be aware of those around you. Common sense says we lift each other up. We support each other. Uh, and no one should be dying from, from suicide, from a tragedy like suicide, especially a 14-year-old boy, 14 years old. It's incredibly sad. It is. All right, so we're going to move from that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about mental illness because it tends to happen on this show uh, simply because I'm a big proponent of awareness of what's going on in the world and mental illness and mental health. Uh, but a little more social media. I put this under social media simply because this is what social media has, has spawned. I was looking, and there was a story, and I cannot, I'm going to look at the exact museum. Uh, there was a story that came out a couple weeks ago. Ah, yes, uh, this was a pop-up art show at the 14th Factory in uh, Los Angeles. Which, it should be in the Arts District. I don't know offhand. I imagine that's the Arts District of Los Angeles. Fantastic area, um, especially if you're into art and into funky things. Uh, you definitely want to hang out in the Arts District. Uh, but this woman goes into the, this showing and tries to take a selfie in front of one of the exhibits, you know, and if you can see, if there's a video that's out there online, if you, if you all search it, 
um, check it out. And it's all these pillars that are set up. She goes to take a selfie in front of one of these statues, exhibits that's there. Well, she leans a little too far back and knocks over the entire row of pillars, destroying all of the artwork along that line of pillars right there. All of the artwork. $200,000 worth of artwork actually destroyed for her selfie. And I put this under social media because social media has spawned this because this is what happens in our world. Instead of actually looking at things and enjoying them in real life, IRL, for those of you that were into AOL in the 90s, IRL, they sit there and they take selfies because it didn't happen unless you take a selfie of it and post it to Facebook or Instagram or IG, as the kids are calling it these days, or whatever that Snapchat stuff is where you put weird stuff on your face. To me, it just looks like kids are possessed by some demon. I don't understand the appeal. Uh, but that's the world we live in. And you know what, wall fans? Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Stop viewing the world through your freaking cameras, through your freaking phones. Put it down for a little while. Just put it down. And enjoy the art. Because you know what? Chances are, there's probably a bunch of pictures of all those artworks on the internet already. You don't need a picture of yourself in front of it. Take, I'm taking a selfie with the artwork. Think about that. Let me get this selfie real quick with this art, this piece of art. No, no, no. No. Grow up. Grow up, America. Grow up the entire world. Because I know this is happening everywhere. Selfie sticks. Still a thing. Still a thing. People have to have these stupid selfie sticks. Get over the selfies, people. Get over it. Get over it. And stop destroying art. And on that note, speaking of doing bad things on social media, uh -huh, this, is one, this is one of the things that drives me the most insane. In fact, months ago on one of the, epi on one of the episodes, I talked about uh, the, the Playboy model who decided to take a picture of another woman in the locker room uh, and then proceed to shame her on that one. might have actually been the Snapchat that the kids are using these days uh, and, and proceed to, to shame this person on Snapchat. And not only shaming them, uh, but taking a picture of a person with no clothes on in the locker room, which is actually kind of illegal, totally illegal, actually. Uh, she has been arrested and charged from, from my understanding. However, it has happened again. So there's a bodybuilder uh, who is actually from England, I believe, as I'm looking through everything. I was looking at this earlier. Diana Andrews, uh, who is a bodybuilder, and I'm sure she's, she's famous. She's probably an Instagram model. I, don't understand, I still don't understand what the hell an Instagram model is. Because, well, I mean, I understand what people are trying to say when they say they're an Instagram model, uh, but if, 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 if anyone's an Instagram model, then everyone's an Instagram model. So, you know, wall fans. Uh, now I'm not only a podcast host, but I am an Instagram model. So is my cat. My cat is an Instagram model. Um, and actually probably the most successful Instagram model in the house is probably my daughter, Zofia. Uh, so I, she's, I'm sure she's like an Instagram model bodybuilder. Um, huge, plumped up fake lips and, and, and fake eyelashes, which is fine if that's your look. But if you're going to do stuff like she was doing, uh, then I'm going to call you out on your big fake lips and your big fake eyelashes. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of other fakeness going on there. Uh, below the neckline, but honestly, I don't care to see. I just don't. And so what she did is Diana Andrews uh, was in the gym, and there was a woman on a treadmill near her walking. She's walking on the treadmill. Um, and she's a little, heavy. I wouldn't even call her heavy. She's heavier, I guess, than an Instagram model ideally would be. Um, and so what this bodybuilder Diana Andrews did was take a picture of her, caption it with love handles, and then send it out. Basically body shaming this woman who's at the gym trying to get in shape. Uh, and she also captioned it with, I bet she's ordering cheeseburgers for delivery. This is what happens in the world today, wall fans. This is what happens. And the reason, there, there's so much to unpack here because body shaming in itself is just out of hand. There's no place for body shaming ever, ever, ever. You know, we can sit here and we can argue, oh, health reasons, everything else. No, there's never an excuse for body shaming. There isn't. You shouldn't even body shame yourself. I do it. We all do it. We all get in the mirror and body shame. You shouldn't be body shaming anyone. The worst part here is that this woman that she's body shaming is at the gym trying to work out, trying to get in shape, trying to be healthier, and doing what she can, walking on the treadmill. And this is why people are afraid of the gym. This is exactly why a lot of people don't want to go to the gym because they're afraid of stuff like this. Not necessarily getting their picture taken and, and having it posted because they're a little overweight, but just in general, the body shaming. 
and people looking at them. Well, I'm here to tell you, Wall fans, we're going to support anyone that wants to go to the gym, no matter what body type you are. You want to go to the gym? Do it. Do it. And any of you Wall fans out there, keep that in mind. Be supportive of your friend. And if you see something like this happen in a gym, maybe you go to the gym, maybe you see it out on the track, maybe you're out running at the park or whatever it is, call someone out on it. Call them out on it. You have every right to do that. Call them out on it. Because that's the only way people are going to learn. And that's why I'm calling out Diana Andrews for being a useless piece of ish. That's what she is. That's what she is. I hope she loses all of her followers. And I hope, I don't, I don't want to wish too, too much bad on people. I hope she loses all of her followers. And I hope she gets shamed beyond belief herself um, for what she's been doing. All right. I got one more thing on social media. There's a lot of ranting on the social media today, and I apologize for that, but it's simply because a lot of ridiculous stuff has been happening. And this one just kind of takes the cake. We're going to go ahead and call this one the asshole of the week, which is tough because we just talked about this Diana Andrews bodybuilder who is really, really could be the asshole of the week any other podcast episode we've done. However, we have this little kid, and I call him little kid because he is a little kid. I think he might be 18, but he's a little kid. He acts like a little kid. Uh, there's a YouTube star named Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Probably not his real name. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably not his birth name. Uh, he used to, oh, he's 20 years old. He still, he acts like a kid. You can be 50, and I'm going to call you a kid if you act like a kid. So this kid, who's a YouTube star, uh, got his start at, at Disney, on Disney Channel, which is funny because he, it must have been in the, the few years since I've been gone from, from, uh, from Disney Channel and Radio Disney for three, four years now. Uh, somehow he got big in those few years, which is possible because Disney just makes these kids huge for a year and then they toss them to the side, which is essentially what happened. Uh, but he started a YouTube channel. He has 8 million followers. That's pretty pretty quality amount of followers. Uh, but what he does is like ridiculous pranks. In fact, he says himself, they're very much like jackass pranks. We all remember that jackass show that was real popular on MTV in the 90s. I think it, it kind of spilled over in the 2000s a little bit. Uh, but what he's doing is all these like really, all kinds of that dabbing. Remember when that dab, um, that dabbing was a thing like a year or two ago? You know, he's, he's doing all this like dabbing thing. Um, and apparently there's some big joke where it's like, what are those? And I think he's talking about shoes. Um, so... News crew goes out to, in, to interview him because he's living in Studio City, which if you're not familiar with Los Angeles, it's, it's an, slightly upscale. We're not talking Beverly Hills, but it is a little nicer area of, uh, of Los Angeles. Uh, it, it, it's right near Burbank, which is where all the studios are. It's called Studio City, so you know it's right near all the studios and everything else. He's living in there in kind of a nicer neighborhood, renting a house, renting a house in this neighborhood, um, and basically terrorizing all of his neighbors. At one point, they lit a couch on fire in his backyard. And in, in like an, a hole they dug, they lit a couch on fire in his backyard. And we're not talking like, you know, because trust me, I, I did some things when I was a teenager. We used to have bonfires and all kinds of, I've been there. I ain't lighting a couch on fire in my backyard in an urban setting, you know, urban, using it in the correct way, not a, not a racial way, but a, a geographical way. It's, it's very much a city setting. It's not, like, it's not like he lives on acres of land. So smoke. And, and, and embers and everything else pouring into his neighbor. And this is just one example of how he's driving his neighbors nuts. And he has fans that come to his house to see him do all of this ridiculous stuff. Like right out in front of his house, in his backyard, whatever it is. And in fact, they sent out a news crew, KTLA, which is a local news station here in Los Angeles, they sent out a news crew to interview him outside of the house. Well, what happened was him and all of, as soon as the news crew got there, him and all of his buddies started jumping on the news van and shaking it and everything else. This is just, this was just their thing. And then he starts dabbing all over the place. If you know this dabbing stuff, that's junk, you know, dabbing all over the place makes this what are those j joke. Uh, and then the camera pans and it shows like all these little like 12, 13 year old girls just giggling and laughing and standing around. Then the camera pans a little more and it shows all of their mothers who have driven these little girls to Studio City from who knows where, you know, but they're too young to drive. They had to be driven there, these tweens. Tweens, if you don't know that term, that's kind of the term that, that's used to describe uh, young teenagers, tweens, you know, so like 12, 13, 14, young teenagers. Um, and all these girls are just ooing and eyeing over this. And the mothers are just over there watching, watching this kid, Jake Paul, raise hell in Studio City for no reason, for some clicks on stupid YouTube, for clicks 
on YouTube. And he's not even doing anything funny. He lit a couch on fire. And he does the stupid dabbing thing. I don't even know how to do it. The dabbing thing was popular like a couple years ago. Get with the times, dude. At least, at least have some quality content, content, wall fans, on your YouTube page. Really, all he's doing is harassing his neighbors. 20-year-old asshole who just really needs to stop. Needs to stop. Needs to stop. But if you have kids out there, don't let them watch this Jake Paul kid. Uh, and definitely don't take your kids to his house to promote this and to encourage him. You know, that's just, mm, mm, I can't do it anymore. I'm really sick of, of the ridiculousness of social media and making these kids famous that do nothing. That do nothing. Support someone that has some talent. And I'm not even talking about myself. Go support Give Me Motion. Go support Cloudside. Go support one of these good vlogs that actually puts positivity out there. Instead of some dumb little, little kid who has no talent. No talent. And all he does is make noise. That's all he does. Make noise. Ugh. Drives me nuts. It drives me nuts, wall fans. Uh, if you're a Jake Paul fan, let me know in the comments there. Um, hey, Kevin, I, I appreciate that you are enjoying the show. You should also uh, subscribe, download, do all the things. Um, that's my, my cousin, cousin-in-law. I guess my, my wife's cousin is jumping on the live feed there, too. All right, let's get into a little TV film and books. One of the greatest things happened three Sundays ago, almost four Sundays ago, and that is the return of Game of Thrones. Game of freaking Thrones is finally back. I'm not going to give any spoilers. I'm simply just going to bask in the greatness of Game of Thrones for a minute here. Uh, wall fans, if you have not watched Game of Thrones, get on it. This is honest, I, honest, honest to God, one of the best shows I've ever watched. It has really everything you could want. Um, if you're not already watching it, uh, check it out. At least give it a chance. Now, of course, I'm sure there are people out there that don't like Game of Thrones. I didn't like Breaking Bad. I, I did not. I didn't care for The Wire. I just didn't. There's a lot of shows I don't want, uh, but I, I can't recommend Game of Thrones enough. At least give it a chance. And oh my gosh, if any of you Wall fans out there want to have discussions about what you think's going on, hit me up on the messenger on um, through the page, facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Another awesome thing. And I'm only skimming the surface because since, I've, since our last episode, Comic-Con happened, which as I like to call it, is not Comic-Con anymore. It is Pop Culture Con. Uh, and so there are all kinds of stuff that came out of that. All kinds of trailers, blah, 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 blah. So I'm not even going to get into... I'm just skimming the surface. There is another thing uh, that encompasses both film and books that I'm incredibly excited about coming out, I believe, in the fall. I want to say October, but I might just be saying that because of the next thing I'm going to talk about and that coming back in October. Uh, and that would be the feature film for Ready Player one. Um, here is a book that I can't recommend enough, especially if you are a child of the 80s, really 70s, 80s, maybe a little 90s. Um, I mean, anyone would like it, but if you're a child of 70s, 80s, um, and a little bit into the 90s where you really know that like 80s pop culture um, and everything that was going, you know, everything that's popular and going on then, you will absolutely like Ready Player One. Check out the book, uh, but Steven Spielberg is, is working on the movie right now. The trailer came out, and I've been a little bit cautious Simply because, I mean, I'm always cautious when a book is being turned into a movie, uh, simply because it, how can you have all of the different elements that they delve into in a book? It's so hard to do that over, um, you know, anywhere from 90 minutes to, to two and a half hours. It's just difficult to do that. Uh, however, the trailer came out, and it looks awesome. It looks awesome. And everyone's, everyone's freaking out because they're like, oh, there's a cameo from Freddy Krueger and this and this and this and this. Yeah, there's cameos from freaking everything because Ready Player One is so rooted in 80s pop culture. <laughs> that has all that stuff in it, all of that stuff. Uh, so check out the book. Definitely check out the book before the movie comes out. Uh, I always recommend reading a book before the movie comes out. If you see a movie and then read a book, I, I don't think it, I think it's just better to go that way. It doesn't mean don't read the book. You know, honestly, I read uh, Forrest Gump well after the movie came out, and it's still to this day in my top 10 favorite books uh, would be Forrest Gump. Um, and possibly and probably top 20 favorite movies. I wouldn't know. I don't know if I can go top 10 there. Um, but check it out. Ready Player One. Read the book. Check out the trailer. Coming out, I believe, in the fall, in October. But I could be wrong on that because I have October on the mind uh, simply because of Stranger Things and because the return of Mr. Robot. 
which moves me on to my next point in TV, film, and books, and that would be Mr. Robot. Can't come soon enough. I've been waiting, like, I was antici- I'm anticipating Mr. Robot the way that I was anticipating Game of Thrones, and if you're a Game of Thrones fan listening to this or watching on the live stream, and you were anticipating Game of Thrones, that is how I feel about Mr. Robot when that comes back in October. If you have not mo- watched Mr. Robot, uh, I warned number one fan Darshan, who's actually missing this live stream right now, I'm noticing, no, number one fan Darshan, uh, she could get unseated. Uh, I see Bree doing a lot of interaction there on the, uh, and as well as helping me um, on, on the live feed. So get with it, number one wall fan Darshan. But I did warn her as well. We're going to be talking about some Mr. Robot. Get caught up on it. I don't spoil anything um, simply because that's another one. I, 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 try, I don't talk about anything now <laughs> simply because I accidentally spoiled a little bit of The Walking Dead, even though I don't watch the damn, I don't even watch the damn show. Uh, somewhere around like episode 10 of Go Tell to Wall, I accidentally spilled a spoiler for, for uh, Walking Dead, even though I don't watch the show. So ever since then, I'm extremely cautious. So we're not going to spoil anything, Game of Thrones, Mr. Robot or anything, uh, but check it out. Um, read the book. Well, read Ready Player One. Mr. There is a book for Mr. Robot too, uh, that, a, a companion book that you can check out as well, but there's already two full seasons of Mr. Robot. Check them out. Season three is starting in October. It's a fantastic show. Um, and I have a feeling they are going to go just, they're going to go all over the place with this season uh, simply because of the political and social landscape in the U.S. Uh, right now. And, and it's just, I, I, it's going to be interesting. It is going to be interesting to say the least. So we'll see what happens there. One last thing I want to touch on TV, film, and books. And this happens to be another show that I've never watched. And that would be Doctor Who. I've never watched this show. I have a lot of friends that are very much into Doctor Who. In fact, I had a friend who on social media was very upset because she had to sit through some of Wimbledon, which is like one of the premier... T- I don't watch tennis. It's a premier tennis tournament in the entire world. Like, it's one of the most prestigious. It's huge. I know what Wimbledon is. Um, and, and she was upset that Wimbledon was interrupting her Doctor Who time. She had to wait to watch Doctor Who. I, I realized there's a huge, rabid fan base. Well, what happened was... And from my understanding on Doctor Who, if you're not familiar with it, they actually bring out a new Doctor... Um, every couple seasons, like, and it, they just continue the storyline, and and it's like this reincarnation of the Doctor. So they they have it built in to explain how why the Doctor changes who it is, like who that Doctor is, and and blah blah blah. Well, what happened was they just unveiled a new Doctor Who um, a couple weeks ago, uh, and this Doctor Who just happened to be a woman. Well, the internet lost its mind, lost its mind. Now keep in mind, I said I've never watched Doctor Who. I don't know that I'll ever get around. I mean, someone's probably going to talk me into watching some of it at some point. You know, uh, it's just, I, I, I don't know. Although now with what's happening, I might do it just to upset people on the internet and then talk about it and blog about it and do all kinds of things. Uh, because what happened was the new Doctor Who that they unveiled, announced, showed, whatever they do, uh, happened to be a female. Like I said. And the internet lost its mind because all these fanboys are like, how can Doctor Who be a woman and everything else? And Again, I don't watch the show. Uh, but here's the thing. It's a reincarnation every time. I don't understand why people get offended because it's a woman. And in fact, the only way that I will accept anybody being offended, and send it to me. Send it to me on Twitter. Send it to me on the Facebook if you're one of those people that's really upset about the female Doctor Who. Is if there's a Doctor Who handbook somewhere that is, is part of canon... For the show, if you don't know what canon, that means like officially, you know, because you have fan art and all this other stuff. But when you have something that's canon, like Star Wars is, is, one, is a good example, stuff that's canon, they have books and, and shows and everything else, that is actually part of the world. So if you can find me a handbook that is canon to Doctor Who and it says, like almost word for word, Doctor Who cannot have a vagina, then I will get behind you. Then I will get behind you on that uh, simply because, yes, oh no, then it's in the canon. Doctor Who cannot have a vagina. Uh, but if that doesn't exist, Get over yourselves, guys. Get over yourselves and enjoy the fact that, I mean, because I, I saw a picture that you, you, you have like a, a probably a good looking woman now playing Doctor Who. Like, wh- what is the big deal? What is, like, why is it offensive? I, it, it's so hard for me to comprehend, you know, a doctor can be a female. <laughs> it's just, it's simply, it's, it's just how it is. A doctor can be a, a female. I don't think Doctor Who's even really a doctor. I think it's more of like a Sherlock Holmes type thing. Uh, most of my understanding of Doctor Who comes from Community uh, because they they uh, they very much did it did a satire on it uh, with Abed uh, and a couple other characters on the show and uh, they called it something else. Someone on the live feed can probably uh, but they were clearly like not making fun of but but paying tribute to Doctor Who. 
that is about the extent of, of my Doctor Who knowledge would be uh, the show community. Uh, so everyone calm down. This is another, this is another part where, another place in the show where we got to use common sense as wall fans. Uh, and if someone is upset about this, explain to them. Uh, so you're offended because the doctor ha doesn't have a penis. Like, think about that. That's the only difference here. Like, Doctor, doctor Who doesn't, like, isn't going to, to donate sperm. Like, that's not what the doctor does. So a, a woman should be able to do this. Pretty sure. Um, now, I'll probably get some hate mail from, from some of my international listeners that probably think that's weird and nothing against being international. It's just I happen to hear directly from domestic listeners on the Facebook um, live feeds and stuff as opposed to the internationals where I get them like a week later. I'm like, what? Oh, okay. Well, someone in Kenya is upset and because I talked about this and it, it happens while fans. I'm not even kidding. It happens. Um, all right. We're going to move on to music. I just I want to talk a little bit about music real quick. Give Me Motion uh, ended their, their national tour Technically, uh, but give me motion, and my, my, my brother Dante will be in Columbus this weekend. Uh, so if you're in Columbus, if they're playing at a festival, I'll share it on the Facebook page. Uh, so if you're out there, go check out Give Me Motion. But another thing happened since the last podcast episode, and that would be the forming of a new band called The Armstrongs. Now, if you are a punk, punk rock fan like I am, think about that for a minute. Think about The Armstrongs. The Armstrongs. Hmm. What could the Armstrongs be? Could it possibly be Tim Armstrong of Rancid? Hmm, I think it could be. Hmm, other Armstrongs, other Armstrongs wall fans. Oh, Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day. Hmm. So that's what happened here, wall fans, is Tim Armstrong and Billy Joe, Ar Tim Armstrong of Rancid, well, of Rancid and Transplants and uh, his own solo stuff, as well as Billy Joe Armstrong of the fantastic Green Day, lead singer of Green Day, uh, started this, this band called the Armstrongs. Now, they're not related. Their last name just happens to match. Uh, they, are, they are the front men for the Armstrongs, uh, and they're joined by Billy Joe's son, Joey, and Tim's nephew, Ray, uh, especially Ray. Like, of course, you got an awesome name, so I'm going to check this out. Uh, but the great thing about this is they released a single. It's called If There Was Ever a Time. Uh, and I'm going to share it on the, the Facebook page, facebook.com slash go tell to the wall. Uh, but this, this first single that they released, actually 100 and you can find it on iTunes. You can stream it for free on YouTube. So I'll share that link. Uh, but I do encourage all of you to check it out on Google Play Music or on iTunes. It's 99 cents for this single they just released. And the reason I say that is we want to support local music. This one really hits home for me. 100% of the proceeds from this single are benefiting a concert venue in the East Bay, nor north, uh, ugh, ugh, Northern California East Bay, which would be like Oakland if you're not familiar uh, with Northern California uh, and the Bay Area. East Bay would be like Oakland. I, I guess San Jose might fall into that, but it would definitely be Oakland, which is, happens to be where Rancid are from, where Green Day's from, and, me, and actually a few other bands uh, that many of you would know as well. Uh, and it's, a, it's an all-ages venue in the East Bay called 924 Gilman. Uh, and it's a punk venue that has been around. It actually, that's where both Rancid and Green Day got their start. Now, this one really, 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 really hits home for me because as a teenager, this is what I did. This is what myself and many of my friends did is we spent the summer going to concerts. We would go to concerts all around Southern California, you know, from San Diego all the way up to Los Angeles. Um, really, that was our wheelhouse, and that's where we were. And a lot of this, we, this was before we were 21. So we had to look for the all-ages shows. In San Diego, there was a couple great venues. One of them was Soma. And Soma in San Diego is actually where Blink-182 got their start. Well, as I got into my later teen years, they demolished Soma and put in a parking lot. They turned it into a frickin' parking lot. So that's why this one hits home for me. We need to support local music. We need to support local venues that do things like this, that teach kids about and really any kind of music. Uh, but for me, it hits home because I was very much the little punk rock kid. I was the punk rock teenager. I was going to all those shows. I was seeing Rancid. I was seeing Green Day. Green Day is a little less punk rock, I would say, than like a Rancid or a Blink or many of those other bands, uh, Unwritten Law, some of the other bands that I've talked about on this show. Um, but, st I mean, grunge, punk, in the, in the 90s, that, that's what I did. That's what I did. Uh, so please, I encourage all of you Wall fans, especially if you're a punk rock fan, check out the Armstrongs, if there was ever a time, 100% of the proceeds, benefiting 924 Gilman and East Bay all-ages nonprofit 
punk venue. And we need to all respect it because that's where Rancid and Green Day got their start. And I love me some Rancid and some Green Day. Man, I'll tell you, I love me some Rancid and Green Day. Rancid. Oh, they just, that new album came out. If you haven't heard it, check it out. Uh, because Tim Armstrong is getting up there in age. I mean, he's, he's been doing this since the early 80s, since Op- Operation Ivy. <laughs> He's been around a while, and he is still rocking it. He has lost, I'm sure he's lost all his hair. It looks like he shaves it to kind of cover that up. You know how guys do that? That's what I would do. Um, and I'm sure I'll be at that point, some point in my life. Um, but he's still rocking it. Uh, and same with Billy Joe, who's been doing this for a very, very, very long time. In fact, he has a son who is old enough to play in a band with him and put out singles and everything else. So it's awesome. All right, we're going to move on. Uh, and we're getting so short on time. In fact, I want to take a little bit of time and, and, and talk about some of these other things. Uh, but I want to touch on a couple things with sports really quick. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, who is a retired NFL uh, player, he also happens to be a big uh, analyst and commentator with ESPN. He has a show on the ESPN radio here in Los Angeles. He also does a lot of NFL stuff on ESPN. Uh, he might be a Hall of Famer. I cannot remember. He might be a Hall of Famer. can't remember at this point. Uh, his son actually plays football for the University of Nebraska. Well, what happened a few weeks ago, and actually... Uh, about a month ago, actually, uh, is, is his son got in trouble for marijuana while on the team. Now, I'm not talking about like smoking out on the field, but got busted with marijuana while he was a player on the University of Nebraska football team. Now, if you've been a listener of Go Tell It to the Wall podcast, you know that I am a huge, huge proponent of medical marijuana. Huge proponent. And I'm not going to get into all my reasons and everything else, because if you've listened to other episodes, you know why. In fact, I've even talked about it for athletes. They don't let NFL players and all these professional athletes use it when really they should. Instead, they fill them them full opioids. Now, that being said, you need to be smart here. You need to be smart. And if you are on a football scholarship and have the potential to make millions of dollars, put the weed aside for a minute. Put it aside. I know personally, personally for a fact, there are many, many professional athletes out there. Some that I know, know for a fact personally use marijuana. Most of them know when they're going to get drug tested or use it in the off-season and don't do it during the season. And this, is, this is an example. And on top of that, Keyshawn Johnson went to Nebraska and pulled his son off of the football team and took him home and said, you're going to take six months off. And it seems like, well, is you putting him in timeout and everything else? And it's like, there is such thing as overparenting. Um, and like I said, I'm a big proponent of medical marijuana. However, this kid has a very, very bright future ahead of him. This is not the time to be using marijuana. It's just not. Uh, so be smart. And I applaud Keyshawn Johnson uh, for what he did. For what he did. You know? Because this kid needs to be smart. And we all need to be smart. Don't throw away your future for something. As much as I'm a huge proponent of it, don't throw things away for it. Just don't. It's not worth it. Take your scholarship. Get your college education. Possibly go on to the NFL. Do it that way. Um, and speaking of fathers in sports, I just want to touch on this a little bit because I've talked about LeVar Ball previously. He's the father of the, one of the newest Los Angeles Lakers, uh, Lonzo Ball. If you've, even if you don't follow sports, you've seen this guy. Here's the thing. Before when I talked about him, I kind of referred to him as the Chris Jenner of the sports world. You know, that's the Kardashian mom. And, you know, he's trying to make all his money. He's loud and obnoxious and everything else. It was kind of funny at first. I found it irritating, but it was a little funny, and I could see how people thought it was funny. Now what's happened is he coaches a AAU team. AAU is like the highest um, youth basketball. Like if you get a team, that's, those are the kids that are going to play in college and possibly, possibly the NBA. He coaches a team in a big tournament in Las Vegas. He's coaching them. Basically runs a female referee off the court because he wasn't happy with her. He wasn't happy with how she was officiating and everything else. And made sexist remarks. So now what's happened with LeVar Ball is we can look back at all the things that he's done, including the radio show that he was on, where he told the female host to stay in her lane. And we can look back even further just to see how sexist and offensive this man is. In fact, we go back to early interviews with him when Lonzo Ball, his son, was starting to come up. And he talked about how he chose his wife because she was tall. And he knew that she could give him all done. Now, back then, you don't think much about it. But when you see, and these are just a few examples of him being sexist and misogynist and just simply offensive to not only women, but to the sport of basketball. Because you don't do that. You don't run a referee off the court in a youth basketball game. So, LeVar Ball, 
I'm not even going to call you the asshole of the week. We're going to call you the asshole of the year here at Go Tell Us the Wall Podcast. And this is going to be the last time we talk about LeVar Ball, but I encourage all of you out there, if you see anything of his, simply ignore it. Don't support this. Don't turn this into another Kardashian situation where we have to see them all the time. All the time. And then I'll be sitting here instead of saying, remember, never forget, it all started with a sex tape. I'll be sitting here saying, never forget, it all started with a sexist, misogynistic asshole. We're going to move along here. We're going to move along here to a little bit of common sense because I do want to get into a little bit more about my grandmother uh, because, as I said at the top of this, this episode, this entire episode is dedicated late grandmother uh, and everything she had done for me and my family and to build such a big family around uh, around her. Uh, okay, common sense. So there's a story that came out a little while ago. I just want to get into this for about five minutes where this woman sent an email saying she wanted to take a mental health day. And everyone was very surprised with how her boss responded and said, that's absolutely fine. You should take a mental health day and everything else. Now, mental health day, and that's funny, my, my uncle, my uncle Chip just jumped on. He spent his career in, uh, in human resources. So he, I'm sure he, he probably has dealt with this at, at times himself. But mental health day, it, it's, it, it's become a more common term. Um, and basically, it's just taking a sick day. You're not sick, but you just need a mental health day. And I've obviously been a big supporter of this. Big supporter of this. Uh, really, ever since I have got into the professional world. Uh, and, but the thing that strikes me here, and I'm, it's fantastic, I love that this spread virally, uh, and everyone is very impressed by, uh, by her boss and his response and saying, yes, please take a mental health day. Yes, absolutely. And thanking her for sending that email. The thing is, and, and some bad things about the way uh, one of my former employees starts with a D, ends with an ISNI. Uh, supported or or, or uh, treated many of their employees <laughs> for mental health day. That was something that was talked about even at Disney. And they supported that. So support that, wall fans. Support that with your coworkers. Support that with your employees. If you have a business, whatever it might be, if you have people that work under you, support that. And I do want to talk about one other thing, and I'm going to put this stuff off for next week because we are running out of time. Thank you for hanging around on the live feed. Uh, people have been jumping on and off there. Um, I want to talk about one more thing in regards to, to mental illness. And that would be, we talked about it a little bit of, at the opening of the show, the loose, loose use, <laughs> the way people use terms loosely, such as OCD and bipolar. They say, oh, he must be bipolar, and they just loosely use it, you know? We learned a long time ago that we don't, there's certain terms you don't use, you know? Like when I was a kid, saying something was gay, like it, it was like insulting, you know? And kids didn't know any better. Well, we've learned much since then that you don't do those things. However, it's been okay to say, oh, well, he's bipolar. Oh, or people will come out and say, oh, I'm so neat. My desk is so neat. I'm just so OCD. Well, think about it this way, wall fans. Think about it this way. Would you go, you, you know, so we don't, use, we don't use the term retarded anymore. Think about OCD or bipolar as those. We don't use those terms as an insult or loosely anymore because we've all learned that it's insulting. Well, it's also insulting to use these terms. To say, oh, he must be bipolar. No, no, you can't use those terms. I'm OCD because I'm neat. Well, wall fans, do you want to know what OCD is like? Do you really want to know what OCD is like? Because I tell you, you don't want to feel what OCD is like. But let me fill you in just a little bit here, wall fans, and anyone out there on the live stream, and you can share this with anybody. Burning Man's coming up. In 23 days, the man burns. And what happens every year is every burner out there goes on this crazy mission to get tickets. Well, you know, a lot of people have tickets. And so right now, if you scroll through social media and you're a burner, you see tons of people stressing out about getting tickets for the burn this year. Well, you know what OCD and OAD is like? I'm not going to the burn this year. I'm not going. However, I have spent the last few days stressing, keeping me up at night about getting tickets for the burn next year. Next year. And I'm stressed about it. 
there's no burners out there without OCD that are, or OAD that aren't stressed about this, that are stressed about this. It simply doesn't happen. So think about that, wall fans. Think about that. Anyone out there watching, listening, whatever you're doing, think about that. That's what it's like to have OCD. That's what that's like. It's not, I keep my desk clean. I keep my office clean. Oh, my closet's so clean. No, no. OCD and OAD are stressing about something that you cannot control. I'm having anxiety about something that's completely meaningless. There's nothing I can do about it. In fact, there's no reason, no real logical reason, no rational reason to be stressed about that. So let's all do better, wall fans. Let's do better. And don't be mean about correcting people, but point that out. Bipolar shouldn't be used as an insult. OCD shouldn't be used to describe yourself simply because you're neat or clean, or that is an insult. Or obsessive Christmas disorder. Probably gonna have to talk about that bullshit when Christmas comes around again. It's not funny. It's not funny, wall fans. It's a real thing. So keep that in mind when you think you're OCD. And maybe you are. If you are, I'm here. You have friends out there that are here. We are huge proponents of mental health awareness and mental illness here at Go Tell to the Wall. But please be smart about what you say. We don't just throw away the term, throw around the term retard anymore. And excuse me for using it. I don't even like to use it, but it needs to be said here. We don't throw around the term, we don't use the term gay as an insult anymore. And don't even get me into racial stuff. That we don't use terms anymore because we have learned that it's offensive. Well, I'm telling all of you right now, it's offensive to use those terms in those ways. So stop. And if you see someone doing it or hear someone doing it, correct them. Do it in a nice way. Correct them. Because chances are it's an ignorance thing. I, I'm not going to sit here and, and pretend that, it's, that it, it couldn't be just a mere ignorance thing and they don't realize what they're doing. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not going to assume that. But do your best. Do your best, Wall fans. We can do better. We can do better. All right. We're running a little bit out of time, but I do want to talk about a few things. In tribute to my grandmother, Therese Yolotowski, who was the best grandmother um, anyone could ask for. I know many of my cousins uh, would agree. Best grandmother anyone could ask for. She was hugely influential in my early childhood. I've talked about it on this podcast before. I have an incredible father uh, who has done everything he can to raise me right. Well, the thing about that father is I didn't gain that father until I was about 10. My mother was essentially a single mother um, until I was like 10. And she had, but she had my grandmother. My mother traveled a lot. My grandmother was always there to support. In Chicago. We lived in Miami when I was a very young kid and then moved to San Diego. And we would travel to Chicago. Sometimes my mother would just drop me off at my grandmother's house. And I would stay there for weeks at a time while she was traveling around the country. And she'd come back and get me or come back for a week. and That's what I did. So my grandmother's house in Bolingbrook, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago, uh, turned into my childhood home. We moved around a lot when I was a kid. My childhood home uh, was grandma's house in Bolingbrook. And last week I went there for most likely the last time in my life because my grandmother passed away. And in fact, the Thursday... Uh, July 20th, when I jumped on and, and did a little bit of an uh, update. It was actually about a half an hour after I spoke to my grandmother for the last time. And I'll tell you, to date, that's probably the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, and she fought a good fight. She made it to, she would have been 87 in September. This, this was her third bout with cancer. Had a couple strokes, a heart attack, and everything else. And, and always, always pushed through. Um, but she was finally done, and she was at peace with it. But one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life was, was talking to her for the last time. The last time. This woman who was an incredible influence on my life. An incredible influence on my life. I wouldn't be where I am today without her. I just uh, simply wouldn't be who I am um, if I didn't have her as a grandmother. 
And I know many of my 13 cousins would, would say that same thing. Uh, so it was very difficult to say goodbye. She was ready, and I think she was at peace with it. But for many of us, we probably weren't fully at peace with it. Um, I mean, I was, but it's still just incredibly difficult to let go. To let go of that incredible influence, the matriarch of, of, of my family. The matriarch. Um, always sending cookies at Christmas. Always supporting me no matter what. I, I mean, I did some stupid shit in, in my youth. Always supported me. Always. You know, needed a shoulder to cry on. She was that. As stern as she was, she was that shoulder to cry on. An incredible woman. Who built an incredible family. And I saw that, the incredibleness. I'm making up new words here at Go Tell Us the Wall. Uh, how incredible that family was when we all gathered in Chicago to say goodbye to my grandmother. And, uh, and I take comfort in that, that she built such an amazing thing. Um, it was incredibly difficult bringing, bringing Zofia uh, to the wake and introducing her for the first time in that setting. Um, but again, just knowing that she was at peace with it. Uh, and that she was an incredible woman, an incredible human being. Um, and had to bury her husband. You know, she lived an additional almost 30 years without her husband, and had to bury her son, um, her, her second oldest son, third oldest child. She had, to, she, had to, she had to bury a son as well. Thank God she never had to bury any grandchildren. I don't think she could have. She had a Facebook account. You know, she listed as, as her occupation on her Facebook account. Simply said, my grandchildren. That's all it said. My grandchildren. I'm going to leave you with one last thing, Wall fans. And this is going to be the toughest thing that I've ever done on this podcast. When we were kids, like I said, I spent so much time at Grandma's house in Chicago. That was my childhood home. I spent nights upon nights upon nights there. When I was very young, um, my cousin Ryan and I were always staying over there. He lived there for a little while when he was a kid. It was both of our, very much both of our childhood homes. Uh, we had a little bit of a tradition before we'd go to bed. Um, and my grandmother would say something to us when we were young kids. And then as we got a little older, it became this game as to who would say it first right before we went to bed. And what she taught us to say was we would say to her, dream of little angels. And so she would say that, say that to us as young kids, dream of little angels right before we go to bed. And then it turned into a game where who would say it first? And of course, she always remembered. She'd be like, ah, oh, grandma. But there was always those times where she'd be, you know, sitting in her chair, coming into the room to say goodnight. And you know she knew. She remembered. But she would, she would wait. And then Ryan or I, and later on my sister, uh, Ray Ray, who was five years younger than me, a um, little bit of a gap in there, uh, would, would, would try to beat her to saying it. And we'd say it. And we'd say that phrase. And she'd, you know, and she'd, she'd, she'd throw her hands up in the air and go, oh. You got me. You got me. And that's the type of woman she was. And I will never, ever, ever, ever forget that. And that's the last thing I said to her when I spoke to her for the last time on July 20th. And here, on this podcast, uh, I'm going to end it that way. This has been Go Tell Us the Wall podcast, episode 25. I am the one and only Sean O'Rourke. And remember, Wall fans, especially when it comes to your family, especially your family, always have passion. And for the first and last and only time on this podcast, I tell you, Wall fans, tonight, dream a little angels. All right, Wall fans, thanks for joining all of you out there. We're going to sign off. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for jumping on and off. Uh, all of you that participated, that checked it out, whatever it is. Um, I'll be honest, this was a particularly rough uh, episode for me. Um, and still a little rough. Um, but we'll all get through it. I have a strong family here with me. Um, I have a strong, strong extended family uh, to lean on for support. Um, and we, we've all, everyone's lost loved ones, 
It's, it's simply just an unfortunate part of life. Uh, no one makes it out alive. You just, no matter how hard you work, no matter how successful you are, uh, nobody's getting out alive. It's not happening. Um, but I will say, hug your loved ones. Talk to your loved ones. Pick up that phone. Fortunately, I'm, I, I felt I spent that additional time with my grandmother. I made her walk down the aisle at my wedding as, as, as difficult as it was to get her. She didn't want to do it. I made her do it. Um, so just hug your loved one and, and keep everyone in mind. And remember that life is precious. Uh, and we'll be back next week. Lots of new stuff coming. Thank you all for your support. Uh, we're going to keep it going. Probably live stream next week. Um, but like I said, hug your loved ones. Keep everyone you care about in your thoughts. Prayers, meditations, whatever it is you do. Just remember how precious that is. Thanks for joining, Wall fans. Always have passion. And for tonight and tonight only, well, really every night, but tonight's the only night I'm going to say it to you. Uh, dream a little angels, Wall fans.